to the next sort of class or subset of, of oncogenic drivers in non-small cell lung cancer that was discovered after EGFR is ALK, or anaplastic lymphoma kinase. And here, if you have genetic rearrangements of this ALK or ALK gene, again, that leads to this activated oncogene driving the growth of the cancer cell and leading to a state of dependency on ALK. This is very important in about 3 to 5 percent of our patients. Um, <clears throat> it confers a state of sensitivity to ALK inhibitors, um, meaning that patients are very, very responsive to these new drugs. So it's incredibly important for us to identify those patients who have this abnormality affecting the ALK gene in order for us to identify the best therapies for them. ALK was only first discovered as a target in 2007, and we were really fortunate because there was already an ALK-targeted therapy in the clinic at that time the discovery was made. So the ALK, in the ALK space, these new, we call them next generation targeted therapies are actually working quite well. Um, there are many of them. Um, when they develop resistance, uh, a number of different resistance mechanisms can account uh, for, for the development of resistance and relapse in these patients. And we've seen really, really great activity with these next generation ALK inhibitors when the first ALK inhibitor stops working. So we know that there is, uh, I would say the standard approach now for patients who have ALK positive lung cancer is to go on to sequential ALK uh, ALK specific targeted therapies, at least two, and, and in some cases we've been able to treat patients very effectively with three sequential ALK inhibitors. And these new next generation ALK inhibitors are very, many of them, very effective in the brain and can actually cause the brain METs to now regress again. So we've seen very high response rates in the brain. We have combinations of ALK inhibitors with other drugs coming, but we also should think about how we combine ALK targeted therapies with different approaches altogether. And I guess the example I would give is if we have a patient who's doing well and this patient develops a single site of disease, a recurrent disease or resistant disease in the brain or in the body, and it's just a single site or two sites. Rather than now switching to a new ALK inhibitor, I think one of the approaches we often would do is to use local therapy, radiation, even surgery, to treat that local site of disease and continue on the ALK inhibitor. 